Currently in Israel, there is no effective system to combat the threat of missile attacks, said Uzi Rubin, a world expert on missile defense. At a lecture last week at the Media Central, Rubin's words chilled a rather hot summer's day. According to Rubin, the only way to counter the threat is to adopt what he believes is the only effective method, active defense, or as he puts it, shooting the missiles out. There are a lot of people who think that it shouldn't be done, that's not the right way to do it. I'll explain my rationale why it should be done and how it could be done. My country is under attack and we are not doing enough uh, to, um, to solve the situation. Recalling the second Lebanon war last year, Rubin noted that the majority of the 4,000-plus rockets that struck Israel came from Syria and not from Iran, suggesting that the long-range Iranian rockets may have been destroyed by Israel in the initial stages of the war. After the 2,000 pullout, what they did is increase tremendously their stockpile of rockets, including not just Katyushas but heavy rockets. The Iranian Fajr 3s, 45 kilometers, Fajr 5, 75 kilometers, Al Zal 2, which is basically it's unguided SCAD. Range is close to 300 kilometers, warhead is about half a ton, so it's really a nasty animal. It's not guided, so it's not accurate. But this is a different class of weapon. After Hafez al Assad's death, his son Bashar became enamored with the Hezbollah and gave them whatever he had, including a long range rocket with a 50 kilometer distance capability. Israel, he says, did not know about these rockets last year. The UN forces that patrol South Lebanon do not patrol the Lebanon Syria border, which means Hezbollah can acquire arms and rockets with ease. What I can say now is that Hezbollah, as we know, has not only completely refurbished itself, but actually equipped itself with more rockets than before. They are talking about 20,000 rockets. But those numbers are really meaningless, uh, because uh, to fire 20,000 rockets, it takes about a year. The lessons learned from last summer's war, says Rubin, is that Israel's deterrence has eroded. The Hezbollah, the, the, the Syrians are changing the total military doctrine. The military doctrine until last, year, last year's war was a doctrine of full-scale warfare. So they're setting up Katyushas and heavy rockets, and the idea is one day to erode, to, attr to attrition us, to bring us to our knees. The Palestinian terror organizations in Gaza have been very effective in manufacturing a homemade rocket industry. Currently, says Ruben, there are eight types of rockets. They have some heavy rockets, but they don't like to use them as they are too cumbersome and prefer to use the lighter ones that they can fire from courtyards or inside houses located in densely populated areas, he says. Quite ingenious, by the way, very ingenious. I take my head off of them how to make simple things into deadly weapons. The quality of their rockets are improving and the propellant used is easily obtainable. All you need is sugar and fertilizer. They melt down the sugar and mix it with fertilizer and then pour it into a wooden mold. While there are constant attempts by terror organizations in the West Bank to manufacture rockets, so far their attempts have failed. However, the day they do reach rocket capability, it won't be just Starot, but Ben Gurion Airport and Tel Aviv that will fall within the rocket range, he warns. So anybody who's thinking about pullback from the West Bank have to think about that too. Those who talk about dialogue and diplomatic talk don't realize who they are dealing with, says Reuven. There is no responsible government. Who can you talk to? Can you talk to Abu Mazen? Can he stop the Hamas? You talk to the squad signora? Can he stop the, the Hezbollah? They are irresponsible. They are not accountable. They do what they want. So anybody who gives us advice, make peace with the Hamas, should take this in consideration. Passive defense, while it works, does not reduce economic damage. People survive, but houses are destroyed. Reinforcing rooms to protect civilians is a costly business. Active government defense. I think I try to convince you here. First, that it's essential. Second, that it's feasible. And third, that it's affordable. There is a vast array of weapons technology to be used against rockets or small mini interceptors, mini arrows, says Ruben. Kinetic technology, modified rapid fire guns, small interceptors, direct energy technology. Phalanx A is a ship defense system that can fire up to 6,000 rounds per minute. 
Phalanx B is a modified version on wheels. Direct energy weapons such as the airborne laser, an entire jumbo with a ray gun. When it flies, says Ruben, it will be the closest thing to Star Wars as it will be able to shoot down a target 300 kilometers away. There should have been an effective system. That there is no system yet is nothing that was created in heaven. It is man-made. There is no problem with technology five, six, or ten years ago to make defense system against Kassans. Our enemies found a way to have a stand of fire against us without any uh, hindrance. What, we, what our Air Force does for Israel, the rockets do for them. What we need to do is first, as we have air defense, we have to have missile defense. And all around missile defense. Our air defense is not impenetrable. Don't make any mistake about it. Individual aircraft penetrated and will penetrate our defenses. Israel had the technology to combat missile threats 10 years ago. Last year there should have been an effective system in place, but there wasn't, he says. This was not decreed in heaven. It was a man-made decision.